my fishy friends and welcome back to a blistering hot stay fishy adventure. We're challenging ourselves this time, probably one of the toughest ones we've done so far and we are going truck camping in the desert on the worst heat wave of the summer. It's 107 degrees right now, the thing was just saying 108 when I went to turn the camera on and we're going to see if we can survive. We're going to try to stay out of the heat, we're going to have some fun. We're gonna try to make the best of a scorching hot weekend. So stick around, it's gonna be a fun episode. Let's see what happens. <sighs> well, if there's one way to stay cool when it's 110 degrees outside, it's going kayaking. So I bought the big banana boat. We're gonna throw this thing in the river. Let's go ride some rapids, everyone. That'll work. How do I look? Does this skirt make my butt look big? All right, here it goes, everybody. One thing that you guys may not know about me is I am an avid whitewater enthusiast, and there's nothing better to do than hop in a kayak and go out and run some big rapids on a day like today when it's so freaking hot. I'm already sweating, and I can't wait to get wet. It has been a long time since I've been in my kayak though, so that's gonna be interesting. It's been almost a year. If you guys didn't see one of the videos that uh, probably the last time I was in my kayak was on the Addicted Fishing Channel. Uh, and we floated down the Rogue River through a wild and scenic area and I went off like a 15 foot waterfall in this bad boy. Today's rapids aren't quite that big, but they're still big. We're going through some class three, some class four type of stuff. So wish me luck, stick around, let's see how this goes. Go, our first little class two rapid. Just enough to get you wet, get the hip loose, get the used to be back in the boat. There's a giant rock up here in the center of the river. I'm gonna try to get to the left side of it because that's the bigger hit. I'm gonna try to fight this eddy. There's a big current line coming off these rocks. Make it to the far left side and drop into the rapid. There you go. Good luck. Number one, complete. So one thing I will say about whitewater kayaking is it's not something that you should do alone. I've been doing this for years, so I'm a little bit more comfortable, and especially on this river. I grew up on this river, so I know where the rapids are. I know what to expect coming in front of me. But the other saving grace is that there is a lot of people on the river out here as well. So it, essentially it makes it a little safer for me. So if I went over, I couldn't get my roll because what happens is if you go upside down in this boat, you have to put the paddle up out of the water, do a special stroke and flip yourself back up before you run into the rocks or, or run out of breath essentially. So if not, I have to pull my skirt and I'll swim. And when I swim, it's really nice to have people there to help you pick up your gear as you try to get to the bank and get back in your kayak. So luckily there's a lot of people out here on the river today. Other than that, it's not safe to go kayaking on your own. So if it's something you're looking to get into, and something you want to start doing uh, for fun and, and I would highly recommend it to anybody it's an incredible sport be sure you have some friends to try it with and or hire an instructor go out with a crew there's a lot of online forums where you can meet people that like to go kayaking and uh, definitely give it a try because 
especially on a 100 degree day like today, it's an absolute blast. And it takes you to so many cool places. That's what I must say about it is the options when you start doing river sports of places to go and things to do and new adventures to have are endless. They're all across the world and people everywhere like to do this stuff. So if you haven't already done it, give Whitewater a try. Go on a Whitewater guided trip and have some fun. All right, here comes the next rapid. Okay, rapid number four coming up. This one's a little bit bigger. This is just a big hole. So the best way to take this on, I'm gonna go ahead into it. I'm also gonna try to clear the drop on this rapid and do what you call a, a boof of sorts. We're gonna boof this pella. You know what I'm saying. We're out here just boofing pellas today, everybody. Hell yeah. All right, let's do it. Pull my nose right out this rock. Battle cross it. It's <laughs> Alright, we made it. We made it. We made it. Move to pillow. Move to pillow. Got a little water up my nose on that one. Okay, so here comes arguably the biggest rapid of the day. This one is very weird. The way I have to enter this and the way I hit this to get the perfect hit on this is, is kind of technical. I have to go across a couple of currents. I'm going to eddy out, which means take a little side pocket right above the rapid and kind of show you guys what I'm looking at and the line I'm going to be after. Uh, but as we go into it, it's going to be crucial that I get the right line or else I'll get kicked off. I might get thrown upside down. And we want to hit this thing perfect for this video. So let's get her done. behind me, got a big drop. What I'm going to try to do is climb all the way across the current, out onto the tongue of that rapid, ride that thing up across that big boil there, and then down and into the hole. Yes, we're ready to go. I got real. Woo. Well, we did it. We went upside down, then we went right side up, and we nailed it. Smasher. Yeah. Well, that went well. That was exactly how I planned it. Not exactly supposed to go upside down on that one, but at least we got a good douche in. We got good and wet, got a lot of water up the nose, but it's all right, it's good for me. Whew. Good stuff. Let's see some comments below on what you guys think of this day and what you think of these kayaking adventures. I have a few other ideas that I want to do. We have some incredible kayaking rivers around here, so I want to kind of mix in some fishing with the kayak trips. There's places that not a lot of people can get to unless you're using one of these boats and, and going a little above and beyond to get there. So I want to see your guys' feedback on whether or not you even wanted to see it or I should be doing it. Because if not, I'll just go do it for fun. But I love bringing you guys along on these rides. It's something that I don't think a lot of people get to see in the world or experience. And to me, if I can show a little bit of this to you guys and have you be excited, have me maybe go out and have the best experience of your life doing something similar, that's all I can ask for. So let's hit another rapid. Yeah. Oh, damn. 
<laughs> Let's see it. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> so good. He'll tell you. Because <laughs> I'm kayaking. It's too hot. Yeah. My name's David. D A V I D. All right, David. Good to meet you, brother. Thanks for the love. Have to say, I always love seeing all you guys, all you supporters out there. You've been floating down a, a desolate river like this. I'm going to raft shouts out. Love addicted fishing. Love stay fishy. So big shout out to all you people out there. And to you, David, if you're watching this video. Thanks for the love. And thanks for watching. You can't do this stuff without you guys. And I love, love, love meeting all the river people and all the people in this community that we've built. The community's always been there, but we just brought to light had another avenue for everybody to meet and greet and have fun and talk and involve and just love this outdoor lifestyle that we live so never be shy to say hi out here on the water you guys because i love seeing it and i love seeing all our friends and family out here on the water so let's run one more rapid then let's try to find another way to beat the heat Made it. Whew. Well, the sun has finally set on the hottest day of the year. I tell you, it was hotter than two rats in a sock out here. But the kayaking really helped, and I had a lot of fun doing that with you guys. So let me see some comments below on what you thought of those kayaking adventures. But we got to eat something today. We haven't eaten all day because it was so damn hot. I do not like to eat when it's hot outside. What summertime's usually when I lose the most weight, it's because it's too damn hot to eat. So we're going really light on tonight's recipe, and this is a really good salad for you guys to remember. Uh, so let's get it started. I'm starving. Okay, let's get it started. So what we're doing here tonight is a very, very Asian-inspired and delicious, very fresh cucumber salad. It's one of my favorites, one that my special lady friend showed me. Um, and it's, I, I've always loved a cucumber salad, but there's a few different recipes to it. Usually the cucumber salad I grew up on, the one my mom always made, involved ranch dressing um, and a little bit of sour cream and stuff. Uh, but today we're going an Asian inspired style of cucumber salad. And in my opinion, it is almost better. It's very light, it's very refreshing, and it has a very nice kind of tangy vinegary taste to it. We're gonna add a little bit of seaweed, add a little chili spice, and of course, some avocado to top it off. So let's get this thing started. It's gonna be delicious and much needed after today's adventures. So I'm gonna take, these are French cucumbers, and I'm gonna try to peel these things a little bit. Not necessarily necessary, if you will, um, but the recipe does call for peeled cucumbers. I like the skin on it. There's a lot of good nutrients in that skin, but nevertheless, we're gonna peel this one just to be fancy. So we're gonna take each one of these cucumbers, chop them up nice and fine. I must say that wind, that nice little breeze we're feeling tonight is a savior because down in this canyon that we're camped in tonight, we camped down here because we have some awesome fishing in the creek right behind us here. Um, but all these black rock canyons like you find over here in Eastern Oregon really harness that heat in the middle of the night. So it's really nice that this breeze came up, gives us a little, little breathing room if you will and makes it not so terribly hot like it was today. It peaked at about 112 degrees down here um, which we didn't have a chance to show because obviously we were kayaking and staying out of the heat. Um, but it was a scorcher of a day out here today, so not ideal for truck camping. But I gotta say, it's a beautiful night. We got the guns out, we're eating a good meal, and we're happy. Okay, next ingredient, I'm gonna do a half of an avocado. Avocado or an avocado, whichever one. Obviously the heat's taking it out of me, guys. I'm speaking gibberish. I'm gonna go nice slices of this. Nice slice of avocado. There you go. Then, the best part of all, we're doing the little nori snacks. 
And I don't know if you guys know what these are, but my fingers aren't working. My teeth are. These are little nori stacks. These ones are Korean barbecue flavored. Very, very delicious. And this is gonna add a really nice flavor to this dish. I'm just gonna take these guys out. Normally you could either buy the little dried seaweed strips um, or you could just get these things and do what I'm gonna do here, but I'm just gonna try to strip these things out. Gotta have a good sharp knife to do this. And these things are dry, so it seems a little weird, but once we put the, the um, rice wine vinegar on here, add a little bit of that chili sauce, all these things will come back to life and add a really nice texture and flavor to this dish. So, next ingredient, rice wine vinegar. I like to do the sweet stuff for this recipe. This is the seasoned style. Let's go a nice, pretty heavy drizzle. It all tastes good. I'm gonna go a little scoop of the ghost cream chili garlic sauce. Don't want to go too crazy on that because that stuff can be awfully hot, which isn't a bad thing if it's hot outside. A little sweating never hurt anybody while you're overheating in the desert. Then we're going a little black sesame seed. Just kidding, it's white. <laughs> Joke's on you. I'm gonna go lid on. Another little shake, 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 Sharona. Shake the cucumber now. Mmm, that smell from that vinegar is unbelievable. Oh yeah, I think we need to go a little bit more sesame seed. Let's give it a quick try. Mmm. My garlic chili sauce on there is unbelievable. But I do think we need a little more red vinegar. Splash in there. Oh man, that flavor is unbelievable. And it's so refreshing. Got that really nice salty, kind of like seafood flavor from that seaweed. Got the very fresh, wonderful taste from that French cucumber. Got the nice mild, creamy taste from the avocado or avocado, whatever one you want to say. And there we have it. Jordan's. Cucumber salad. Jordan's 110 degree cucumber salad. Nothing left to do but sit back and relax and enjoy our dinner. Mm, delicious. Just look at that. Great color. Wish you guys could smell it too. The smell of this, that nice tangy vinegar. That seasoned vinegar, that rice wine vinegar is probably one of my favorite. I'd almost drink this stuff right out of the bottle. Mmm. And the way that nori came back to life, you can see it's not so dry anymore. Has that nice seaweed texture, almost like a seaweed salad. Yeah. This is living. Mmm. Well, I'm stuffed. That was a perfect hot night meal. I think it's time for bed. Oh, I am exhausted. It's amazing the way the heat takes the energy out of you. Really all we did was kayak today and drive. Do a little bit of exploring. Found our camp for the night. And I am pooped. I'm telling tell you the truth. It's about 85 degrees out here still. I don't even think I'm gonna use my sleeping bag tonight. Oh, hi mister. Hi, you mister. You want up here? Come on, get up. Up, up, up. Come on. Get up here. Right here. Come on. Here we go. Go up there. Oh, never mind. He's embarrassed. Ah. <sighs> well, good night, everyone.
Well, breakfast of champions. No cup of joe today. It's already way too hot outside to be drinking any coffee for me. But I brought another tasty treat that's gonna help us stay hydrated and it is a Hermiston watermelon. Here in Oregon, we have these very, very special pieces of fruit called Hermiston watermelons and they come from Eastern Oregon and they are world renowned for their taste and their texture. So let's bust this one open with the, the old Gerber hatchet and get some water in it. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good Hermy there. Look at all that juice running out. You know, back in, in uh, grade school, I won a watermelon seed spinning contest. So for all you competitors out there, game on. Look at that. If you've never had a chance and you live in the Pacific Northwest to have a Hermiston watermelon, don't miss out. They're good pretty much through September. So get yourself one, get hydrated. Let's go have some fun today. Well, before it gets too hot, let's do some fishing. Now this is an absolutely beautiful little creek. You can see it has a really nice glacial tint to it. It should make it easy to get close to these fish. It's really low. They're all gonna be confined down into these little pockets. So we're just gonna go from pool to pool, cast away and see if we can't find ourselves an early morning biter. There he is. Oh God. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a good one. Oh, it's a good one. Oh, geez. Holy Moses. I was not ready for that. Just flipped it right in behind that little stick, that little bit of structure here. Just started going through the current and when we got ourselves a beautiful rainbow trout on here. Heck yeah. That's a good way to start a morning. Look at this thing. Oh, what a beauty. Okay. So, okay. There he is. Let's get him in the sun right here. Look at how beautiful this little guy is. Hooked perfectly, using a nice barbless hoop. And there he goes. Sweet. First hole, third cast. I'm liking it. Oh, there he is. Oh, God. Just missed him. I find a lot of times in, in rivers like this how the structure is so imperative to catching these fish. And you can see, and usually in, like, in a place like this, it's either going to be one, a boulder, or two, some sort of wood. And this spot has them both. So searching through and like finding out spots like that, or searching out spots like that in the river where you have a good bit of structure, like big boulders creating these little backwashes, along with that bit of structure that is that wood, creates a perfect little hiding spot for these trout. Allows them to sit there under that cover, no predators can get to them, and all that food just keeps coming right to them with that current. And there are obviously two behind that rock. Oh, there he was, dang it. Moved up into this little bit of faster water. A lot of times when it's as hot as it was yesterday and, and it's gonna be today, these fish will sit in those faster ripples so they can get more oxygen. That water that's moving through their gills a lot quicker allows them to get a lot more oxygen to their bloodstream. So first cast in that fast water, it was definitely a fish. Oh, not the second one though. He's, he's too smart for that. There he is, just got him. Oh, pulled him right out of that fast water. Nice. Nice. I was just letting it drift along the bottom, bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Oh, I almost didn't even feel him bite. Heck yeah. Woo -hoo. Look out, little. Look out. Wow, a beauty, too. Look at how cool this fish looks. Really, really neat spots on this thing. Come on, little guy. Come on. There he is. Beautiful. How cool looking. Almost looks like a cutthroat. See how it has the, the interesting spots along the tail? A lot of times these western slope cutthroat like this are native to a lot of these different creeks in the Pacific Northwest. And nonetheless, that is an absolutely gorgeous trout. Thank you, buddy. See you later. Woo! Fish number two. Okay, just bushwhacked our way up into this next little hole. Looks promising. We got a big, giant tree laying across the river up here. Some good current moving across that other bank. Let's see if there's a fish there. 
Oh god, oh my god. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel, Little. That was a massive trout, you guys. Followed it all the way to the rod tip and grabbed it as soon as I went to go to pull up to start casting again. He's still right here. I don't think he really felt that hook. There he is. Oh my god. That was so freaking cool. Oh my god, I can't believe he didn't eat it. That was by far the biggest fish yet, no doubt. Holy moly, that was awesome. Oh, there he was. Oh God, he had it. Right in front of the little. Oh. Just got slammed moly. Dang it. I'm gonna weasel my way in right behind that log. Put that thing to swing through that deep. Oh, there he is, got him, got him. Yep, he came back for it. Round two, oh, it's just a little guy. Little guy. Oh, buddy, hit like a ton of bricks. Oh, not what we were looking for, but nevertheless, it's a fish again. This is why it can be so important to use barbless hooks in, in rivers like this, you guys, because you have these smaller fish that are gonna be biting your hooks, and a lot of times it's best to even go to single barbless too so that you can catch and release these things ethically, but today we've hooked everyone pretty nicely. They're not bleeding. I'm getting them back in the water healthy. Let's get another one. There he is, got him. Another one on. I think this might be a little one again. Yep, just a little guy. Just a little guy. So one thing I'm noticing, especially is in these more wide open areas where there's not as much cover is where I'm finding these little ones. And I think why it is is because those big fish are hiding under those logs and in those better pursuit angle spots so that they're keeping all these little guys kicked out. So I think the goal is search a little bit more for another big tree or big rock on the river. See if we can't find one more big one. Oh my God, it took it as soon as it hit the water. <laughs> there he is, there he is. Oh yeah, the old straight down river presentation, another little baby guy. But that's okay, it's a fish no less. Really cool looking little trout here. Wow, beautiful. Hey buddy. Whew. Well, I tell you what, it's starting to get hot already and the sun hasn't even fully risen. But nevertheless, we did it. We accomplished this challenge of truck camping in 110 degrees. I wanna see your guys' comments below. This wasn't necessarily a survival challenge on this episode, but more of a, can we stay in the heat? And we did it. We found a ways to stay cool. We've camped in a beautiful spot. We caught some awesome fish. And nevertheless, it was another amazing episode hanging out with you guys. So until next week, same time, same place. You all stay fishy and we'll see you out there.